at the back of the bus. People are scared to see next year. The racism is brutal. That when white women are racist, they play the victim. And as the officer was white, she did not trust his intervention. The policeman suggested her remarks were racist against him. Danae was later charged for racially aggravated harassment against the officer, whilst her abuser was given a caution. My attacker is now acting like the, the victim, <laughs> you know what I mean, and crying. Aggressive black woman. And I'm trying to explain that, extremely that tough. your privilege has no status if here. <laughs> you, you're the attacker here. Individuals. And, that to, and I'm explaining that to a member of the police, and then that gets turned round on me to attack me even further. Mm. That's deep. to travel too far here in China to see and such a strong community in play you know to see grandma cycling on a bike you know and I uh, hear people don't look down on you you're treated better uh, that's the sort of place you want to be honestly like I don't know if any dangerous place here in China I can't get into honestly you know I can't believe it and uh, yeah I think people are listening now even though my channel is not about this sort of thing, but it's a special occasion and uh, I just feel like I can't shut up, especially I'm a black British guy as well, so, and uh, of course, um, and so a lot of people um, have their own opinions when it comes to this sort of thing, so, anyways, I'm going to go indoors, I'm on my break right now, I've got like, what is it, um, an hour, 15 minute break, and totally, normally it's around an hour, 30 minute. Hip hop casual, that's the word, that's the word there, that's what I was thinking, <laughs> hear that, right? So, yeah. Definitely, definitely we're going to talk about some of the things that a lot of people are a bit scared to talk about and thankfully I've got a channel so it feels, it feels like um, people are listening so hear me out there's a lot of things I have to say as well today They say go to a place you are treated really good on a place that is safe and um, that's the way it is anyways now this is uh, just some chicken and some fish. One thing I've got to say about China is, sorry, the food are bloody oily, but, sorry, I'm just trying to get my water. Boy, it is very, very tasty. See, what we're seeing back in the UK, um, it is really, really troublesome. Honestly, well, it's a thing that's been going on for such a long time. You're seeing the riots, you know, uh, they're saying like, we don't want, what is it, they don't want, um, what is it, migrant, and even when migrants are doing great things, yeah, they're trying to contribute to the UK economy, and then guess what? You get people out there, yeah, destroying. And uh, this story, I think I'm going to play you a clip and then I'm going to give you my honest opinion about it. I heard that from the window up there and uh, I called police straight away. Uh, then they uh, smashed all windows, the ground floor here. Overnight, all this happened. They come again and they burn completely. Very few people let us down, and also majority are very, very kind, very good people. I know it's not easy to stay here. Uh, it's for my life, for my safety, my well-being, also I am I totally damaged. I can try over and over again and again to reach the same result. There you go. Mm. Awesome. Well, bloody holy. So I got my eyes as well. So, 
I'm on my lunch break, okay? Please, I need to utilize this young, this lunch break to the to the maximum. You know what I mean? So I do, I do feel for the for, for that guy, you know, and uh, the shop completely got bond down. You know, it's it's mad. Let me just take a break from eating for now because this one is very very important. Understand? Shop got bond down. Um, he's a migrant. Um, he's a good migrant. I'm, I'm pretty sure. The open business is there. And he was specifically targeted because of his success, you know. And then they say, "Oh, if you if you want to come to this country, you have to make sure you integrate to the culture and yeah, you contribute." And that guy, he is contributing. Uh, he, uh, he opened up always uh, a coffee shop, right? Just to contribute to the to the local community or to the local economy as well. And then guess what? You've got evil people out there. They target him specifically. I was like, no, we can't see. They don't want black migrants to succeed, let alone black British person to succeed. Not a chance. Mad. Pure madness. And then these people, these migrants, they're coming in. They want to integrate. They want to contribute to the culture, to the to the country itself. And guess what? That's what. That's how you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay that person. <laughs> oh boy this country pretend to see um, racism doesn't exist now in the UK right but when you look at it in every single area every single angle you want to look at there it, it, it's just screaming of racism everywhere so that's the reason why I left and I came to China that's his place that's his here yeah that's oh my, my here God. it's in the middle seat no right here your place mine, mine is age you know um, my advice to that man, don't open another shop in the UK. Now, for me, me, I've made up my mind, I am going to invest in Africa. Definitely, my route is from Sierra Leone, West Africa, love it. I can speak the language fluently, perfect, because my mom taught me well, do you know what I mean? So, I love the fact that my roots, I've always, I've always stayed strong to that, you know? And then in this part of the world, you know, whenever I say oh, I'm from Sierra Leone, no one understands me, so of course I have to say I'm from the UK, you understand? And rightfully, that that's where I'm from, you know, I'm a citizen in that country, you understand? But then again, blood, deep down, I'm an African guy, you know? I'm not like jumping into the wagon recently, it's, oh yeah, I'm an African, no. The, the difference between, um, let's say, British, Black British and American, well, let's say, for us, we are more closer connected to the continent of Africa than a lot of Americans because Americans when you look at them their struggle is it's really brutal the black Americans right so they completely erase uh, a lot of their, their trace on of course and if, if you dig deep you can find where you're from only if you're interested I think um, a lot of them uh, let's say Americans, um, they're also very ignorant when it comes towards Africa, they don't want to embrace it, you know. And uh, if any black person tell you they're not from Africa, they are living in Cuckoo Land. Bloody hell. Look at my big jaw, mate. I've put on a lot of weight recently because I'm not sleeping. Well, <laughs> that's not good. That is not good, my friend. What can I say? What else can I say? Um, definitely don't open business in the UK if you're a black um, person. They don't want you to see succeed. And then these are the sort of people, right? They will go to African countries, right? They will find the best area to stay, right? Really, they don't want to integrate with the locals. And I tell you what, a lot of African migrants or black people in general find a way to adapt to the culture. There. And black people have this ability to adapt quickly to culture, even if, even though they can't even speak the language. And most of them, most of us have the ability to learn the language as well very very easily get a, a grasp of that language so quick but a lot of white people unless you get into their space you know, you know what i mean i'm not a channel that I say oh i hear all white people because that would be totally totally wrong honestly that is not the message i'm trying to put out there but i'm just trying to say those people that think black people are evil no 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 <laughs> you, you, you are absolutely being misleaded you are been you have been told lies and how black people if you if you think black people are, are let's say violence no 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 
You are the reason why we are acting up like this. When we keep quiet, oh, get it easy. You want to manipulate on. When we voice our opinion, it's too aggressive, it's too rude. You know? This, this is bullshit. And the other story is, holy hell, this food is good. I'm missing it now, even though it's freaking highly. I think this is part of the reason why I'm putting on weight. You know, the thing here in China, the most dangerous thing is the bloody, it's the bloody food. <laughs> yum yum. You can't make this thing up, mate. Honestly, I will get to China later. Right. Let me zip this. So. Paint out as if I was a aggressive black woman. That was extremely tough. If it wasn't <laughs> for those individuals. Now that is messed up. Yeah, young lady. Really. Oh, and since you're in the army, the Brit the British army experiencing racism left and right. Um, am I surprised? Hell to the no. The black soldier who fronted several recruitment campaigns had to work in an unacceptable environment where she experienced sexist and racist harassment. As well as apologising, the army has paid the soldier a substantial financial sum. Kerry Ann Knight, who left the army this year, has been talking for the first time. Kerry Ann Knight always knew she'd stand out in an army struggling to recruit both women and ethnic minorities. Were you the only black person in Yeah, there? I was the only um, a black female. But she joined full of hope, assuming racism had long been stamped out. I am not surprised at the slightest. They don't want us there. They don't want us to, to mingle, a lot of them. They're nice British people. I have to say they're a nice British, white British person, very nice. But, a lot of them are just two-faced. For some reason, I thought um, someone in uniform was going to be professional, and I was very excited um, to be a part of that and just creating my own family um, within the army. Kerry Ann became a face for army recruitment. It's controversial, not least because in the past there have been allegations of bullying. Kerry Ann says she witnessed it but she too suffered at the hands of her fellow white male instructors. They'd pile everything daily on my desk, so just to show me that I'm not welcomed. And I remember one day they took a photo of me just standing at that desk, looking slightly broken, just having to sort out that rubbish before I can use my desk. Let's put our way. Two bloody face. <laughs> it's peak, man. It's really peak on... Yeah, the abuse, it's absolutely disgusting, mate. You know, picking on a woman, you know? And uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're doing some stupid remarks, you know? I mean, oh yeah, I'm just, just a banter, I'm just trying to joke. No, you're not joking. You meant everything you said to that, to that lady, you know what I mean? There are racism in every area. I mean, trying to get a job. What is it, in football, in education? You know, when I said in the last video, like, you have had a head start, I don't mean that lightly. I think a lot of you don't understand what I mean, yeah? Let me make it very clear to you. You had a head start in terms of education, yeah? In terms of privilege, even in terms of transportation, traveling to different places, right? You know, back in the days, uh, looking back into the history, you know, black people in the UK, you were not, e you're not even allowed to sit in front of the bus and let alone to jump on the bus. You understand? That was a seat. You're, you're actually told to go and sit at the back, at the back of the bus. People are scared to see next to you. The racism is brutal. But I must say, I'm world travel. I've been to, what is it, 40 plus countries. I'm currently living here in China. Love this part of the world, so China. The level of safety I feel here, it's on, it's on hard of, really, on match compared to, compared to what you will find in the UK. Absolutely, we're fired down. It's shocking, mate. Eh? Like, yeah, yes, people do stare at you. They look at you, they want to take a picture of you. And, uh, well, that's it. Yes, of course, and they do have, um, what is it? 
discrimination when it comes towards um, um, the job market, especially in teaching English as well here. Yeah? yeah, what I've noticed here about the people, because they've been told lies from the media, or the propaganda, oh, white space is the best space ever, and uh, basically, they just think that. And unfortunately, that's the reality here. And I've also stressed this as well in my last video. I said, all I said, previous video, really. And uh, yeah, it's really sad. It's really sad. When I look at it, yeah, the people. Once, oh wow, that's a loud baby there. Once, once they get to know you, yeah, here. Once they get to see who you are. They're the nicest people, in fact, in generally, like, out in public, right? Nicest people. The only problem here is, is just the face, you know what I mean? A lot of Chinese people do, do prefer lighter skin. They, they really admire white people. They really do, yeah? And not just in China, but also in South Korea, in Japan, and let's say in this part of the world, in Asia, really. But of course, not done before, there are also nice people that also want to interact with you, that want to be friends with you, are me. If you think these people treat me so poorly, you think I'll be coming here? No, I've been coming to Asia since 2018. The moment I graduated and I left the UK and I was like, you know, I went to see the world and this is the part of the world I came to, right? Thailand, I've been to Thailand 12 times, you understand? And uh, the respect you get here, you cannot find it in the UK, not at all. The people do judge, but for the most part, they also give you respect. Hello, hello. <laughs> Can I take a photo with you? Yes, sure, absolutely. Oh, thank Why you, not? thank you. Absolutely. Why not? Let me take a photo. Okay. 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 Okay.